for the last 71 years, we've watched some of the greatest moments in sports history. Celtics now lead 45, and West with a long jump, Russell deflected it and keeps it. Beautiful play. Feeds off quickly to Havlicek, who's been guarded by Krebs, who is holding back. Goes up, they jump long. Kuzi throws it high in the air, and the Boston Celtics are the world champion. Oscar Robertson throws to Kareem. Seven seconds. Kareem with a big shot. Kane setting something up with Larry Bird, who gets it low. What's a move on Byron Scott? What a move by Larry Bird. Malone is doubled. They swat at it and steal it. Here comes Chicago. 17 seconds. 17 seconds from game seven. Or from championship number six. Jordan. Chicago with the lead! It's Kobe again. But what if we went all the way back and redid it? Today is the year 1949. Welcome, guys, to a brand new series here on the channel where we will be re-simulating NBA history starting all the way back in 1949. Now, technically, that's not the first year of the NBA, or technically it is. It's it's a weird thing. It, it doesn't add up perfectly. Uh, I think there's... It's, it's a little different, and how we're doing it is a little bit different because in the 1949-1950 NBA season, it was actually technically, I think, 15, 16, 17 teams, something crazy like that, and then it dropped all the way down to, like, 9, 10, 11, whatever. So what we're basically doing is we are starting with eight original teams. Now, let's say in 1949, there was 15 or 17 teams. It's one of those. I would say probably eight or nine of those teams never came back to the league. Like they just, those, those franchises died. They just, they never continued on, but the original eight do. And here are the original eight, by the way, if you guys are enjoying these type of videos and want to see more, definitely hit that like button. It, it helps out the channel. It gets these videos out there and shared out. So that way I can continue to do these every other day or every other two days. We'll see what happens. But I'd really appreciate it if you guys hit that like button. Subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. And uh, let's get on to it. So, here are the eight original teams. And we'll go over the rosters. So, we've got the Tri-Cities Blackhawks, which ends up becoming the Atlanta Hawks. We've got the Boston Celtics, who obviously stay as the Boston Celtics. Uh, we've got the New York Knicks. We've got the Minneapolis Lakers, which eventually becomes the LA Lakers. Uh, we've got the Syracuse Nationals, which end up becoming the Philadelphia 76ers. And we've got the Fort Wayne Pistons, which become the Detroit Pistons eventually. The Rochester Royals, which eventually become the Sacramento Kings. And we also have the, eventually we'll get there, Philadelphia Warriors, which end up becoming the Golden State Warriors. So those are the teams. You guys saw the rosters. We've got... Joe Folks, we've got uh, we've got George Mikan in here, we've got Kenny Sailors, we've got Arnie Risen, we've got Al Servi, we've got a bunch of guys uh, in this. And by the way, I should be, I'm on Xbox here, so I will actually be saving a scenario here of this uh, exact roster and all the logos. I'm, I'm pretty sure the logos carry over. I hope they do. So I will be uploading this and you guys will be able to find it under, I guess, B Draxler, my, my gamertag B Draxler, or I'll just name it NBA history 
resim and then uh you guys should be able to find it so i will be uploading that as well but uh real quick i do want to go over just uh show you guys the standings here so i've got as close to the original logos as i could get there is technically one logo before this boston one that should that's where it should be uh, it doesn't have the yellow around it but unfortunately couldn't find that one we do have the tri-cities blackhawks uh, we did find the New York Knicks. The Fort Worth Pistons is actually a little bit different. This is actually before 1949. Uh, it's in 1949 to like 1953 or 54. It's more of a gray silver robot uh, looking logo. And then we've got obviously uh, the Western Conference, which is right here. We've got the Rochester Royals, the Minneapolis Lakers, the Philadelphia Warriors, which you can barely see on here. And, um, yeah, those are the eight teams. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, eight. And the Nationals logo isn't popping up. Why? I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll have to fix that. I'm not sure why it's not working. Um, but anyways, we also, so here's the plan. Once we hit 1983 or 1984, whichever season the Magic Bird era start, we're actually going to export every single player and import them into that roster and we'll carry on from there. That way, everything's done for me. All of the expansion teams and, and all of that. So that will be nice. We'll lose a little bit of history, but we'll have the history from this save file. So. We, you know, we won't lose anything necessarily. We can always go back and look. Now, some players that kind of cross over have, you know, half their career in this and half their career in the next save file. That will be a little jumbled, but we, you know, we watched the video. We know it, the NBA history. And I also have an Excel sheet that shows you what happened through the whole history. And you guys can go in the description down below. Click that link. It's a Google uh, Sheets, Sheets link. And you can kind of see it's an Excel sheet of just kind of what happened, right? MVP, champions, all of that stuff. So we we have one place where we can see everything. Uh, but what that allows me to do is actually have a whole lot less teams in this. So we have, how many teams do we actually have here? We have 18 total teams. Now, up until 1983, there's only 18 teams. So that's why we've we only have 18 teams in here obviously you can't you can only add six teams or no there's 23 or 24 teams by 83 uh but we're gonna add the expansion teams which you can add up to six now i think i put it we're gonna end up expanding up to five just because that sixth one sometimes it, it breaks the, the my nba so i just want to be really super careful with that so we have 18 teams in here, uh, which obviously makes it a lot easier to add the teams. And then the last five teams will be expansion teams, right? Uh, so they are all listed as no teams. And then as we go, we'll go ahead and add every single team. Before we end this first NBA season, real quick, uh, as you can see, the, the scores are pretty low. I set the shot clock to, I believe, 35 seconds. I'm going to change it uh, in the offseason to 30 seconds. Just wanted to make sure the scoring isn't insane because of these no teams. Um, we also actually filled the no teams with just 70 overall random players um, that don't have, you know, any like high potential or anything like that. And they're all six foot seven. So I'm probably going to change the shot clock to 30 seconds just to keep the pace down uh previous times that i've done this i've you know if it was 24 seconds the scoring was just outrageous so there's going to be a little bit of testing a little bit of adjusting here in the first couple of years also what i've also done and this is brand new to the series if you guys are you know if you guys have seen these series before in, in previous 2ks you guys know i've always had injuries off well this year as you can see we have injuries on uh, and if you look at the amount of games that George Mikan has played, he's only played 79. So I think he missed a game. Uh, so injuries are on. So I'm curious to see here in year number one what the injury report, report looks like here. Uh, I don't really see any big time players. Let's see. Let's go to their overall here. 
Uh, so D Don Otten is injured for Tri Cities. Uh, torn a left Achilles. He's out one to two more weeks. Wow. Okay. So he must have did that early on in the league uh, or in the year. Obviously, you see a lot of Bill Teagues. Uh, that's just a random player. So interesting. Not a ton, ton of injuries. I do have the injuries set to thirty, I believe, on seriousness and and uh, and how often it happens. And as we go, we can adjust that and whatnot. I also have salary cap off. Just because with salary cap on, it literally just breaks the game. So uh, we'll have salary cap turn on once we enter the new uh, the Magic vs. Bird era and we transfer everything over. But for now, it's going to be off. So those are a couple more things I want to go over and see how it impacted the season. And now... The 1949-1950 most valuable player is George Mikan, averaging 17.6 points. Again, these numbers will go up. We're going to make the shot clock 30 instead of 35. But 17.6 points per game, 10.7 rebounds, 2 assists per game, nearly 2 blocks, shooting 64% from the field. Rookie of the year, there is no real rookie of the year technically, but this is going to give it to Frankie Bryan, who averaged 13 points, 3.8 rebounds, and 2.6 assists. He's 26, so I wouldn't really count that. Uh, obviously, we'll get into the draft classes later. Alex Hanum wins a sixth man of the year with the Syracuse Nationals, and George Mikan wins defensive player of the year with the Minneapolis Lakers. Dolph Shays wins clutch player of the year, which obviously is in the game and then nick nurse is a coach of the year obviously coaches you know we did a modern day you know file or whatever so coaches are, are going to be a little weird for for a bit as well all right all nba first team we've got bob davies for the rochester royals kenny sailors joe folks dolph shays and george Mikan. All NBA second team, we got Bobby Wanzer, Andy Phillip, Harry Gallatin, Arnie Johnson, and Connie Simmons. All NBA third team, we got Frankie Bryan. We got a no no name player. Uh, we also got Alex Hannum, Vince Bordla, Borila again. Also, if I say a name wrong, I apologize. I don't know how to read. All right, Arnie Risen when, uh, is the All NBA third team center. All defensive first team, we got Kenny Sailors, uh, a no no player, Joe Folks, Fred Shaw's. And George Mikan. I guess we could override and put someone in here. But I I honestly don't really want to deal with that. So, all defensive second team. We've got Dolph Shays, Jack Karras, and Connie Simmons. League leaders, again, this will be very different next year once we change the shot clock. Uh, but George Mikan was the leading scorer with 17 points per game. Uh, he also led the league in rebounds with 10.7 rebounds per game. Uh, Bobby Wanzer led the league in assists with 6.9. Kenny Sailors led the league in steals with 1.5, but he is out for two to four weeks uh, for the Boston Celtics. And George Mikan led the league in blocks with 1.7. So Kenny Sailors is the big injury here. Let's see if there's any other bigger injuries. I don't really see any. So that could impact, you know, how how this these playoffs go. Boston is the four seed in the East. Uh, we've got Minneapolis as the one seed in the West. Rochester Royals are the two seed in the West. And the Philadelphia Warriors are the three seed in the West. Uh, I probably, oh, you know what? I can't until I do expansion teams is add or is change like the conferences and stuff. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I'll look into it. The Syracuse Nationals, whose logo is still broken. Uh, they are the one seed. The two seed was the Tri-Cities Blackhawks. Usually they're the worst team, so that's pretty cool that they're, they're the two seed in the East. Three seed in the East is the New York Knicks, and the four seed is the Boston Celtics. So moving on to round two here, or technically round one, and we'll just go ahead and simulate the whole round here as the Minneapolis Lakers are into the Western Conference Finals. The Rochester Royals beat the Philadelphia Warriors, and the Syracuse Nationals beat the Boston Celtics, and the Tri-Cities Blackhawks beat the New York Knicks. Uh, and it is best of three in the first round, and then once we hit the finals, it will be best of seven, but these all should be best of three. So, we've got the Minneapolis Lakers versus the Rochester Royals, the Syracuse Nationals versus the Tri-Cities Blackhawks 
game number one. Ooh, the Royals beat the Lakers in game one. The Nationals take game one in the Eastern Conference uh, Finals. I simulated the whole round on accident. The Minneapolis Lakers, the MVP George Mikan gets eliminated as the Rochester Royals win that series 2-0. Tri-Cities, they go ahead and type the series at one. And in game number three, it is uh, the Syracuse Nationals who beat the Tri-Cities Blackhawks. Arnie Arisen wins Western Conference Finals MVP, averaging 17 and 9. Again, doesn't really matter because this doesn't really exist. Dolph Shays, 13 points per game, 5 rebounds in the Eastern Conference Finals. So on to the NBA Finals, where we've got the Syracuse Nationals versus the Rochester Royals. Here in the very first NBA Finals in our NBA history, we have the Rochester Royals versus the Syracuse Nationals. Looks like the Nationals have home court advantage, but the Royals up early. The Nationals take a lead, and now it's 41-36 entering the fourth quarter. Again, the score is going to be a little low scoring here in year number one, but that will do it for game one. The Syracuse Nationals beat the Rochester Royals 63-50. Not a very high-scoring game, unfortunately. Uh, but you know what? That's all right. The Nationals, they take game one. On to game number two after one. The Royals lead it 28-17. to And then at the half, they continue to lead it by 15. Let's see if the Nationals can come back here. But it looks like the Royals are going to dominate this game here as they will win it 85-67. to Uh... Who's this again? Paul Seymour. He had 14 and George, or not George, Ed Mikan. He had 20, 16 and 9 for Arnie Risen, but Mikan is injured. So he's playing down a little bit, but I don't think he's going to miss any games. On to game number three, where the Royals are now at home with obviously the series tied at one. 10 minutes ago, they're up 56 to 42. A minute to go, they're up by 16, and that will do it. The Rochester Royals have taken a 2-1 series lead over the Syracuse Nationals. Al Servi had 14 in that game. Uh, Holzman had 12. Uh, Mikan again had 12, and Bobby Wanzer had 10 and 4 assists. On to game number 4, where it's tied after 1-18-18. The Nationals had a one-point lead at the half, and now they're trying to pull away here in the third quarter, trying to tie up this series at two apiece. Down to two minutes to go, and the Nationals have a 73-60 to lead, and they will hold on to this lead when it's 77-66. to So the Syracuse Nationals tie up this series at two. Dolph Chase had a big game, 17-6. and Red Roca had 15-3, and and Hanum had 10-3-2. and 21.6 rebounds for Arnie. Johnson was not enough as we head to game five in Syracuse. After the first half, it's 30 to 28 into the third quarter. The Syracuse Nationals lead it by nine now, heading into the fourth. And with 250 to go, up by 10. Can the Royals make this thing interesting? They cannot, and it will be the Syracuse Nationals winning 64 to 50. 19 and 8 for Dolph Shays, 18 or 14 for Red Roca. Uh, no one scored in double figures for the uh, the Rochester Royals. So we head on to a game number six, where the Nationals have a 3-2 series lead. Here we go. After one, the Royals lead it 18-16, and at the half, the Nationals take a one-point lead. It's now 36-35 at the half into the third quarter. The Royals have taken the lead, and now the Nationals tie it here early on in the fourth quarter. Six seconds to go. It's 72-69. Dang it. I wanted to actually stop that with a minute to go. Uh, let's see. Was there a game log here? What happened? Wanzer stole it, so the Royals are going to win it. I'm not going to enter in if, if they're going to already have the ball. So we'll go ahead and simulate it. The Rochester Royals have tied it up the series 72 to 69 as uh, Hannum and Shays both had 10, 14 and five assists for Bobby Wanzer. And we have a three, three series tie here in the very first 
NBA Finals. Wow, I'm actually kind of stunned that we're actually having uh, this close of a series. This is a really, really good series. Actually, I didn't look at the starters. So before we get into game seven, let's take a look at the starters. We have Bob Davies, Bobby Wanzer, Arnie Johnson, Arnie Risen, and Ed Mikan for the Rochester Royals. We got Al Servi, Paul Seymour, Johnny Mikowski, uh, Dolph Shays, and Red Roca for the Syracuse Nationals. So let's head into uh, game number seven. Who will be the very first NBA champions? Heading into the half here. And the Royals have control of the game. They lead it by 10 at the half. The Nationals got a lot of work to do. And they, wow, they had a huge run to start the third quarter. As we enter the fourth quarter. And it's, it's a four-point lead for the Syracuse Nationals. Absolutely insane. Can the Syracuse Nationals hold on here? They're up by 11 now, and that will do it. We're going to jump in to watch the celebration of the very first NBA championship. 15 seconds to go here in Game 7 of the 1949-1950 NBA Finals as the Nationals will dribble out the clock, and they will become the very first NBA champions and a bucket there to uh, to finish it off and that will do it the Syracuse Nationals are NBA champions the very first NBA champions Wow they win it 70 to 59 in a game seven The Syracuse Nationals who will eventually end up becoming the Philadelphia 76ers are the very first NBA champions in our resim of NBA history. The Rochester Royals fall short here in the NBA Finals after beating the MVP in George Mikan. They weren't able to finish the job. Man, they had... Did they have a 3-2 series? No, I think Syracuse had a 3-2 series lead. I don't know. Maybe not. And there you go, there's the Nationals hoisting up the Larry O'Brien trophy. And that will do it. The Syracuse Nationals are NBA champions. Will they be able to repeat next season? We'll see what happens. So the Syracuse Nationals are the very first NBA Finals champions. Dolph Shays wins Finals MVP, averaging 11 points, 5 rebounds. Obviously, again, hopefully the, the, the numbers are... A little bit better uh in the next in the next season but there you go the first nba champions and the first finals mvp Dolph shays so here we are in the 1950 nba draft and with the number one overall pick the detroit pistons uh are going to select we're gonna have to sim and i'm gonna have to do all that to auto i forget how to do that but i will get that done uh the detroit pistons at number one will select Bob Cousy in the 1950 NBA draft. The Boston Celtics select Paul Arizon. The Warriors will select a George Yardley. The Knicks select a Bill Charman. The Blackhawks select Larry Faust. The Royals select Chuck Cooper. The Nationals select Earl Lloyd. The Lakers select George King. And then we went back around Chuck Share to the Pistons and so on and so forth. So there you go. There is the 1950 NBA draft. Every team got two players, and uh, we'll see how it goes. The 1950-1951 NBA season is now complete, and George Mikan wins his second straight MVP award, averaging 22.4 points per game, 11.8 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 1.7 blocks, shooting nearly 70% from the field, 78% from the free throw line. Paul Arizon wins a rookie of the year over Bob Cousy. He averaged 17.5 points per game, 7.9 rebounds, 3.3 assists, 1.2 steals, shooting 52% from the field, 65% from the free throw line. Ron Livingstone wins a sixth man of the year with the Philadelphia Warriors at 12 points per game, five rebounds and two assists. George Mikan wins defensive player of the year for a second straight season. And most improved is Ed McAloy. 
Uh, 17 points, 8.7 rebounds, 2.6 assists, 55% shooting from the field, 81% from the free throw line. And then the clutch player of the year is Dolph Shays, who obviously is the reigning finals MVP. Uh, he averaged 15 and a 9 per game. So on to the All-NBA First Team. We got Frankie Bryan. Bob Cousy's on the All-NBA First Team. So didn't win Rookie of the Year, but is on the All-NBA all First Team. 16-4 and nearly 6 assists per game. Joe Folks wins or is on the All-NBA First Team as well. Paul Arizon and George Mikan. All-NBA Second Team, we got uh, a random player. No, you know what? This was a... Shoot, this was a rookie that didn't get picked. He got picked really late for some reason. Um, or it's a random player. I'm not sure actually what happened there. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, that's the second team. Dolph Shays, Vernon Mickelson's on that team. Connie Simmons, all NBA third team. Uh, we've got Bobby Wanzer, Fred Shaws, Harry Gallatin, and Ed McLeay, all defensive first team. Uh, we got Joe Folks, Jack Nichols, George Mikan. Fern Mickelson and Connie Sim Simmons on the all defensive second team. And we will head in to the playoffs. The number one seed in the West is the Minneapolis Lakers. And once again, uh, the Philadelphia Warriors as the two seed and the Rochester Royals as the three seed. In the East, it's the Knicks with the one seed, the Nationals, the defending champs with the two seed. The three seed goes to the Tri Cities Blackhawks and uh, the Fort Wayne Pistons. Ended up actually with the fifth seed, but they beat out the Boston Celtics, uh, who had the fourth seed. So let's go ahead and take a look at the league leaders here. George Mikan averaging 22.4 points per game. Frankie Bryan averaging 17.5. Paul Arizon averaging 17.5. Bob Cousy, who is injured, uh, but he, he should be good for the playoffs. Oh, I guess, no, they got eliminated, so they're not even in the playoffs. It doesn't matter. He averaged 16 points per game. Uh, rebounds per game. Uh, it was, oh geez, a lot of no names. Uh, George Mikan led the league in rebounds. Assists per game was Bobby Wanzer with nearly eight assists per game. Connie Simmons with 1.4 steals per game led the league. And Jack Nichols for the Tri-Cities Blackhawks. He averaged nearly two blocks per game. He led the league in blocks. We'll see how the points are with the 30 second shot clock i'm curious let's go to box score here 96 52 oh that's against a no team though uh let's see 88 81 and we'll go ahead and view the box score because it's a smaller league i don't know it might actually we might just be able to take this to 24 seconds i'm not sure um 91 to 80 yeah it's still a little low scoring so maybe we do put it at 24 seconds i don't know maybe we'll do that in uh in the next season the blackhawks get eliminated the pistons are eliminated and the philadelphia warriors are eliminated so we still have a chance at a repeat from last year but the minneapolis lakers as the one seed obviously they lost in this spot a year ago the Nationals are back, but they play the one-seeded New York Knicks. So after game one, the Lakers and the Nationals both take game one. And the Royals have been eliminated. They cannot get back to the NBA Finals. The LA Lake or Minneapolis Lakers are on to their first NBA Finals appearance. The Knicks tied up this series at one. And game three to decide it, the defending champs have been Eliminated. The New York Knicks are headed to their first NBA Finals appearance. George Mikan averaged 19.5 and 10 rebounds in the conference finals. Connie Simmons averaged 10, 8, and 5 in their conference finals. So here are the lineups heading in to the 1951 NBA Finals. Slater Martin, Paul Wather, Jim Pollard, Vern Mickelson, and George Mikan for the Minneapolis Lakers. For the New York Knicks, it's Carl Braun, Butch Van Breda Cullif, Vince Boydla, Harry Gallatin, and Connie Simmons. Good lord, some of these names are impossible to say. Goodness gracious. All right, on to game number one. The Knicks have home court advantage. The Lakers with the one point lead after one. The, La or the Knicks took a four point lead at the half, though. And on to the third quarter, into the fourth quarter, they now lead it by seven. And a 6-0 run to start the fourth. They have a 64-51 to 
lead. Two and a half minutes to go, they have a seven point lead. 46 seconds ago, they have a nine point lead, and that will do it. The New York Knicks take game one, 82 to 67. Harry Gallatin with 21 and six. Uh, Brown with 13, two and five, or Braun with 13, two and five. 13 for Charmin. I'm used to seeing Christian Brown as a Nuggets fan. That's that's just what I think. So, anyways, uh, and then for the Lakers, 13, 11 and four for George. Mike and had five blocks was not enough here in Game One of the NBA Finals. We will just set the shot clock to 24 seconds. I think the the smaller league and the the more competitiveness because the no teams aren't terrible, terrible. They're still bad, but they're not that bad uh i think we can actually have it at 24 seconds which is nice we don't have to worry about that later on on to a game number two where the lakers have an early lead lead it by five at after one lead it by 14 at the half and yeah they're blowing out the new york knicks here in game number two the lakers have taken home court advantage they win this one 93 to 71 van breda with 13 and 4 braun with 12 3 and 5 boyla with 10 and for George Mikan, he had 25, 13, and 6 blocks. Slater Martin had 19 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists. Vernon Mickelson with 18 and 8. Uh, a pretty impressive game, though, for George Mikan as he gets his first NBA Finals win. On to game number 3 in Minneapolis. And the Lakers with a 26-19 lead after 1. They hold on to that 7-point lead at the half. The Knicks trying to come back here, and they have. They've taken the lead going into the fourth quarter. Three and a half minutes ago, it's a big lead for the New York Knicks, and the Knicks will retake home court advantage. They win this one 88 to 79. Van Breda with 20 points. Gallatin with 16 and 8. 11 and 11 for Connie Simmons. Uh, Mickelson with 15 and 8. Uh, yeesh, George Mikan did not have a good game number three. So we will head to game four in minneapolis once again it's a 20 to 18 lead after one the knicks with a three-point lead at the half but the lakers have come back to tie it and now take the lead going into the fourth quarter 71 69 248 to go the lakers with a one-point lead down to 48 seconds the lakers up by four up by six now down now still up by four and they're gonna hold on to this one the lakers tie up the series at two they win it 95 to 91 Boyla had 22 26 and 6 for Slater Martin 24 9 and 5 for George Mikan so we have a 2-2 series here in the 1951 NBA Finals after one 22 19 lead for the Knicks now at the half it's still a three-point lead for the New York Knicks the Lakers though have a big third quarter into the fourth quarter two and a half minutes ago they lead it by seven and I'm not sure if the Knicks can come back here. They're down by four. Remember, no three-point line, and that will do it. The Minneapolis Lakers go into New York for game five and win 86-82. Boyla had 24, 15 for Brown, uh, 15 for Van Breda, 12, 7, and 3 for Gallatin, 10 for Simmons, and for George Mikan, he had 28 points, 10 rebounds, one steal. Slater Martin was 16, 3, and 3, 11, and 6 for Vern Mickelson. The Lakers now have a 3-2 series lead heading into game six where they are at home. But the Knicks with a huge first quarter up by 10 and the Lakers just dominate in quarter number two. They have a big lead going into the, well, not a big lead, but a 10 point lead is a pretty big lead in 1950 with no three point line. Four minutes ago, they have a eight point lead. A minute 28, it's a 10 point lead and an eight point lead with 34 seconds. Let's take a look at the Minneapolis Lakers winning their first NBA championship. Five seconds to go here in the 1951 NBA Finals, and that will do it. The Minneapolis Lakers are NBA champions for the first time in franchise history. They beat the New York Knicks 81 to 73 here in game six at home. George Mikan, back-to-back -back MVPs, back-to-back -back defensive player of the years. Who the hell was that? There was a Nationals player celebrating. Whatever. The New York Knicks lose their first NBA title. They join the Royals as the only two teams to lose in NBA Finals in NBA history. The Lakers tied the Syracuse Nationals for NBA titles with one. Pretty easy to keep track when, you know, there's only been two seasons. But good for George Mikan. 
he now has two MVPs, two Defensive Player of the Years, an NBA title. Dude, what is that Nationals player doing? What is happening? Anyways, we'll see who wins Finals MVP as it looks like George Mikan wins his first Finals MVP, one of the most dominant years you will see in the NBA. MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Finals MVP. So the Lakers are NBA champions for the first time in franchise history. 19 points, 11 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 2.7 blocks, shooting 58% from the field, 72% from the free throw line. George Mikan is your Finals MVP. Here in the 1951 NBA draft, Mel Hutchins goes number one to the Detroit, or not the Detroit, the Fort Wayne Pistons. Uh, the Boston Celtics select Don Sutterledge. The Royals select Sam Renzino. Uh, the Warriors select Gene Melchiori. I don't know. Some of these names, by the way, I found some draft classes and these are fairly accurate. So you generally what I would do is take, you know, like, two or three players in each draft class, especially early on. But I found some actually that are pretty accurate. Now, let me know if you guys see anything that's off. Um, but they look overall pretty good. So these are the drafts. Uh, Whitey Skoog. No idea who that is. I don't even know. that. I'm assuming that's a real player, but I have no idea. Um, there are some extra players, though. So I'm not sure. I might just... Uh, these guys that are on the no teams, I might just lower them all the way. Um, cause then there's a bunch of 40 or 40 overalls. So not really sure how accurate that is. 1951 and 1952 NBA season is now uh, complete. George Mikan wins MVP. We put the shot clock to 24 seconds and I think it's better. George Mikan averaged 27 points per game, 17 rebounds, 3.9 assists, 1.5 steals and 2.7 blocks per game. Rookie of the year is Jack brown okay uh hmm i think this is where it might actually be a little weird let's put in let's see mel hutchins only average 12 5 and 2. hmm jim slaughter uh he's not an actual player though there's uh they're on no teams shoot because this wasn't the greatest Draft class, I, uh, Don Sutter. Okay, let's let's give it to Mel Hutchins for the Fort Wayne Pistons. He was the number one overall pick. He averaged 12 points, five rebounds, 2.7 assists. Only started 24 games and only played in 74. Uh, but Mel Hutchins will win a Rookie of the Year. Ron Levenston uh, wins a Sixth Man of the Year, averaging 19, seven and three. George Mikan, a third straight year where he wins MVP and DPOY in the same year. George Yardley wins most improved 19, 10, and 3. Frankie Bryan wins clutch player of the year for the Tri-Cities Blackhawks 19, 6, and 5. On to the All-NBA first team. We got Bob Cousy, who averaged 22, 7, and 8. Bobby Wanzer, Paul Arizon, who averaged 27 and 10, and 4 assists. Big year for Paul Arizon. Bobby Wanzer, 12, 5, and 11. Dolph Shays, 23, 13, uh, and 2.4 assists. And then George Mikan. All NBA second team, Slater Martin for the Lakers, 18, 5, and 7. Frankie Bryan, 19, 6, and 5. Vern Mickelson for the Lakers, 24 and 12. The Lakers are so good, man. I mean, that big three with Mike and uh, Slater Martin and Vern Mickelson is ridiculous. But Vern Mickelson is injured. Uh, he has a strain to the left quad. Now, it doesn't, you know, he's not going to miss games, but he's, he's a little affected, right? Connie Simmons. 13 and 15 and 6 assists for the New York Knicks. All NBA third team. We got Bob Davies, George Yardley, Harry Gallatin, and Neil Johnson. All defensive first team. Kenny Say Sailors, Dolph Shays, George Yardley, and George Mikan. All defensive second team. We got Jack Nichols, Vern Mickelson, and Connie Simmons. The Syracuse Nationals were the one seed in the East. Tri-Cities, the two seed in the East. New York at three. Boston at four. Fort Wayne is last. And then for the West, the Lakers, 73 and 9. The Warriors are the two seed, and the Royals are the three seed. And for the league leaders here uh, in scoring, Paul Arizon led the league in scoring 27.3 points per. Or actually, it was George Mike in 27.3. Paul Arizon was second with 27.2. Uh, and then the leading rebounder was George Mikan. Assist per game was Bobby Wanzer. 
steals per game. Connie Simmons led the league, and and uh, George Mikan led the league in a blocks per game with 2.7 blocks per game. So on to round one here. The Pistons do not end up making the playoffs. So we'll go ahead and assimilate round one. The Philadelphia Warriors, who uh, were the two seed, they are eliminated. The Tri-Cities Blackhawks, who were the two seed in the East, they uh, lose. And the Boston Celtics are also eliminated. So the three-seeded New York Knicks knock off the two-seeded Tri-Cities Blackhawks. We've got the Lakers versus the Royals for a third straight year. And the Nationals versus the New York Knicks. So game one, it goes to the Lakers and the Nationals. Game two will actually go to the Syracuse Nationals. They are back in the NBA Finals after losing last year to the Knicks in the Conference Finals. And the Rochester Royals are eliminated once again. George Mikan averaging a cool 42 points in uh, the Conference Finals. Oh my, 11 rebounds, three assists, and three blocks. Goodness gracious. Uh, can I see game recent games here? So against the Royals, the two games, he put up 38, 12, and 3, and 47, 10, and 3. Yeah, that'll do it. That, that'll do it. Dolph Shea, 17 points, 11 rebounds, two and a half assists, and at three blocks per game in the conference finals. And we get the first two NBA champions up against each other. In year number three here for the 51 52 nba season well, let's take a look at the starting lineups al Servi, paul seymour johnny mikowski dolph shays and red roca for the syracuse nationals for the minneapolis lakers it's slater martin paul walther jim pollard Vern mickelson and george mikan so here we go game one of the 19 51 and 1952 NBA Finals. The Lakers have home court advantage, and after one is tied up at 26. After at the half, the Lakers have now taken a five-point lead. After four, the Lakers have an 85 to 78 lead here in Game One against the Syracuse Nationals. Down to three minutes ago, they have a 10-point lead, and that will do it. They win it by 21. The Nationals could not score to end that game. And the Lakers will take a 1-0 series lead. Vern Mickelson with 34-10-4. Slater Martin with 23-5-8. George Mikan with 17-12. Dolph Chase had 22 in the loss. Mikowski had 25-7. So on to game number two in Minneapolis. The Nationals with the lead after one. The Lakers take the lead back though at the half with a two-point lead. And now into the third quarter. Lakers are starting to pull away here. And that's going to do it. The Minneapolis Lakers win 118 to 90. George Mikan 43 and 9 and 3 of 5 blocks as well. Slater Martin with 24. Vern Mickelson with 24 and 12. Dolph Shays 22 and 13 in the loss. On to a game number three. Back to Syracuse we go. They have an eight point lead after one, but the Lakers come back here, take the lead to end the first half 65 as 60. Two into the fourth quarter and the Lakers now with a 96 88 lead and with three minutes to go two and a half they have a five point lead a minute and 30 it's a three point lead and with 51 seconds to go the Syracuse Nationals have taken a lead 113 112 this is a good game let's jump in Lakers have the ball here down to 42 seconds ball into George Mike and Mike nice move and George Mike Gives the Minneapolis Lakers a one-point lead. 114-113. A hell of a spin move by George Mikan. The, the previous finals MVP, or the reigning finals MVP. Three-time regular season MVP. Dolph Shays can't make the jumper, but Paul Seymour comes in. Tips that one in to give the Nationals a one-point lead. 115-114. The Nationals trying to avoid going down 3 Oh, the Lakers now with it with 27 seconds to go. They're going to hold it at the top of the key. Now 15 on the shot clock. Get a screen from George Mikan. Jumper is good. Walder with the bucket. 
And the Lakers take a 116-115 lead with 14.6 seconds to go. Can the Nationals win it here at the buzzer? Ball is in to Dolph Shays. 10 seconds on the clock. Shays with it. Vern Mickelson guarding him. Six seconds. Five. Gets a screen. Dolph Shays drives right. Puts it up. Good. 1.2 seconds to go. No timeouts for the Lakers. Full course shot is almost in. It won't go. 117-116. Dolph Shays with the game winner with one second to go. And the Nationals stay alive. They'll make it a 2-1 series. Oof. They could not afford to go down 3-0. What a shot by Dolph Shays. Dolph Shays living up to uh, the two-time clutch player of the year. That's for damn sure. On to game four in Syracuse once again. The Nationals with the six-point lead after one. A five-point lead at the half. And they're still holding on to that lead as they lead at 76-68. Now 2.53 to go. They have a 7-point lead. 51 seconds to go. Still a 7-point lead. And the Syracuse Nationals will hold on to tie up this series. Slater Martin had 22. Hanum had 20 and 6. Dolph Chase with 15 and 15. And we have a tied series at two games apiece. Headed into game 5 in Minneapolis. The Lakers with an 8-point lead after 1. But they lose that lead at the half down 2. Into the fourth quarter, Lakers take the lead back. Well, it was tied, actually, after three. They've taken the lead back here to start the fourth quarter. Back and forth we go. Down to a minute 46. The Nationals with the five-point lead. The Lakers trying to come back here. I don't think the Lakers can do it. The Syracuse Nationals will win game five on the road. 103-98. to Slater Martin with 22. Uh, George Mikan just has not showed up the last two games. Dolph Chase with 24 and 10, Red Roca with 15 and 13, and the Syracuse Nationals have taken a 3-2 series lead. Dolph Chase and that game winner completely changed this entire series. They went from being down possibly 3-0 to now having a 3-2 series lead. That's that's how big of a shot that was. Game six in Syracuse. Here we go. The Lakers have an early lead. 34-16, that's a big lead. Can they hold on to it here and force a Game 7 back in Minneapolis? They have a 12-point lead with 9 minutes to go. 2.51, and they have a 16-point lead, and that will do it. The Lakers win it, 120-102 to on the road. Vern Mickelson with 29-9. George Mikan with 25-13. and 13. Slater Martin with 17-6-5. and 5. Dolph Chase with 21-7 in the loss and we have a game seven for the second time in three years here to start out our nba history pretty impressive and it's the two previous nba champions the syracuse nationals who are the first ever uh nba champions and the lakers who won it last year so on to game seven nationals lakers in minneapolis after one, the Nationals with a one-point lead. The Lakers, though, a big run in the second quarter, take a 10-point lead at the half. They're extending that lead, have a 20-point lead going into the fourth quarter, and uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Ooh, well, that, that was a heck of a series, and that shot by Dolph Shays in game three doesn't really end up mattering as the Lakers will end up winning this series. Let's jump in and watch the celebration. Five seconds to go, and the Lakers will run out the clock, and they are going to be NBA champions and the first team to win back-to-back -back NBA titles. They win it 121 to 100. The Lakers have done it. The Nationals won the first. The Lakers have now won back-to-back -back NBA champions. I don't know what what is going on with that Nationals player. Uh, just a weird glitch in the game. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the Lakers, back-to-back -back NBA champions. They have done it, and I'm assuming, 
By the way, Vern Mik Mikkelsen had a hell of a series. George Mikan kind of disappeared in games three and four and five. So I'm not sure who's going to win finals MVP as George Mikan will hoist up the Larry O'Brien trophy. It's his second NBA championship to go along with three MVPs, three defensive player of the year awards. Does he win a second finals MVP? He does. George Mikan is your finals MVP. The Lakers are NBA champions once again. George Mikan, 25 points per game, 12 rebounds, 2 assists, and 4 blocks, shooting 60% from the field, 88.9% from the free throw line, and he is back-to-back -back finals MVP. What a start to this series. George Mikan is absolutely dominating the league. Three MVPs, three Defensive Player of the Year awards, Two finals MVPs, 2-0 in the NBA Finals. Pretty impressive. Hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. It helps these videos get out there and, you know, helps the channel grow. So I'd really appreciate it if you did hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel as well. We're almost at 6,000, so I'd appreciate it if you guys sub to the channel. And obviously turn on the, those notifications because, I mean, I... We've got a long series to go. We've got a long, long ways. We're, you know, we're only in, what, 1952? Uh, so, yeah, we've, uh, we've got a while to go. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys are excited for this series. Let me know in the comments below, who are you looking forward to most to seeing? Like, what player, what era are you looking forward to see? Uh, being re-simulated, and I will see you guys in 1952.